Hi, Doug Shafinski here with Pirelli Metzler, off-road uh, and motorcycle tire technical specialist. We're here at Dirt Rider today and we're going to show you the techniques used in putting together a mousse, which is a solid foam insert, inside a tire. Mounting it on a rim, the mousse uh, is uh, all about technique. It has nothing to do with brute strength and if you use some of these techniques, it should make your life a little easier. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about some of the tools I'll use today because the whole idea is to use hand tools that most everybody has access to. First is the Pirelli Moose. It comes in an 18 inch, a 19 inch, and a 21 inch for the fronts. Basically the difference between 18 inch and 19 inch is uh, minimal. For mounting applications, the 18 inch is maybe a little easier because it uh, has more sidewall flex. The tire we're going to use today is the Pirelli 32 Pro. One of the first tools that we'll talk about is the Bead Buddy by Motion Pro. There's several on the market. The next thing we're going to use is the Motion Pro Spoon. We're also going to be using today the Angle Iron by Motion Pro. We have a tire soap, which is an industry product. It's just a lubricant. And a second lubricant that we'll use comes with the mousse, and it's the mousse gel. The mousse gel basically comes in a tube. It's the right amount to use for one application. We'll use a brush to spread that inside the tire. I'll use nitrate gloves. Nitrate gloves kind of help keep the, the grease feel off your hands for the rest of your tools. Ratcheting 12 millimeter to do with the rim lock. And this is a tool that I've made myself. It's basically just a sliding C-clamp. I use it to hold the rim lock. And with the rim lock, you need to hold it in so that the tire can go down into the bead seat Without, uh, without the use of this, there are several other ways you can do it, but this is probably the easiest. All right, we're gonna use a little of the mousse grease. I've got my nitrate gloves on here. <clears throat> I'm gonna put a little bit of the mousse grease on the mousse itself, cut down on heat and friction. The rest of the gel we'll put inside the tire. Okay, at this point, we're gonna use some of the tire soap. And I'm gonna lube one side of the tire. <clears throat> Basically, you can't use too much lube. Lube's gonna be your best friend with this. With the lube side of the tire going on first, the, uh, the goal is to get the rim lock underneath the bead of the tire, pushing on the mousse. I'm gonna take my larger tire iron <clears throat> and just Pry it over on one side. Once it's in, the next thing I want to do is force that mousse down inside the dish of the rim as well so that the other bead is lying flat with the rim. Taking note that the rim lock is properly seated and not on the back side of the mousse. With it down all the way around, I'll take and re-lube the tire on the other side now, the side that I'll be working on. Now I'm going to use my adjustable C-clamp to push the rim lock back to allow the bead seat to go down into the dish. This is a nice tool because it's adjustable and it's easy and all I'm doing is using it as a clamping device to slide that rim lock back into it. With that, I'll take a bead buddy on each side of the rim lock as a holding device to basically allow that bead of the tire to slide down in to bring the tire over and get it down in on the back side there. Then I use another tire iron to get a second bead buddy in. And once again, it's just a holding device. Okay, so now I've got a, a bead buddy put on each side of the rim lock and I'm making sure that this tire, the bead, is down inside. So this clamp is holding the rim lock back so it allows the bead to go down inside there. The next thing I'm gonna do is just keep spinning this around till I can put a third bead buddy in. And once again, the bead buddy has that lower edge which just forces the tire down into the dish of the rim. And then it has the clamping device to latch on the spoke so it doesn't go flying across the room if it has any strength. So we're looking at this part here is down in the dish. <coughs> As I flip this over, the next thing I'll do is use my tire iron and upside down. I'll turn it over from putting it on. And it's one more tool to force that tire down inside the uh, dish of the rim. So now I'm going to switch to my angled irons. And the angled iron is really nice because this part here goes right in nice 
and gives you the leverage pull to slide that up and over. Without the angle on the iron, you're kind of more prone to scratch your rims and it's a little harder to get in. When I get to this point here, the first thing I want to look at is make sure that the bead is down in the seat. It's really hard to get another tire iron in there, but all you have to do is let this side off, put the tire iron in, flip it back over, and you got it in there. At this point here, I usually just give it a good whack with my hand and it'll go right together. You don't necessarily have to do that. You could put another tire in it if you wanted to. After it's popped down in there, begin to take all your tools out. As you take your tools out, the bead will come up and seat itself. If it doesn't seat itself, I use the rubber tip air source just with enough air pressure to pop the bead and seat the bead. You want to do all that before you tighten your rim lock because basically the rim lock is a holding device and you want the tire to be able to center itself and seat the bead all the way around before the rim lock is clamped down and tight. So using an air source, I'll just give it enough air to seat the bead and pop up and it's all the way around. I'll check the other side. And once it's up, then I'll tighten my rim lock and we'll be ready to put it back on the bike. Once you're sure the bead is seated all the way around and you've tightened the rim lock, it's ready to go back on the bike. Should be good for about six to 10 hours of riding time. What will happen is eventually the moose will shrink due to the loss of the gas that's inside the little pockets. When the moose shrinks so that the bead no longer stays seated, the moose has outlived its service life. Usually you get two to three tires out of it. Basically it's ready to go back on the bike. We're gonna do the front. See dirtrider.com for additional tech tips. And uh, once again, remember, it's not about brute strength, it's about technique. One side has to go down in for the other side to come up and over.